Today I want to talk um, for what few minutes I have left with the spirit of worship still in the room because I continue to worship God because of his manifestation to us. So I have about 20 more minutes, 20, 22 more minutes that I want to talk about the power of repentance, the power of repentance. And I'm going to go through two scriptures. I'm, I'm not going to take my main text to start off. I'm going to put scriptures as we need them since time is of the essence right now. And, 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 but I will call some scriptures off. And I will, if you desire, email or give you an outline of today's class and you can go through it. And I may even teach again on it because I know I don't even have time. This is a class that really takes about 90 minutes and we got about less than 30 minutes. So we're going to give you the particulars and come back and teach it over, Lord willing. But the power of repentance. A lot of people don't realize that repentance is the key that unlocks the door to revival. Without repentance, there's no revival. Without repentance, there's no restoration, there's no new life, and there's no deliverance. Uh, the Bible, those that don't repent and decide to, when it comes to salvation, keep doing what they're doing. Uh, it was, I think, Solomon, yeah, it was Solomon in 20th chapter of, of Proverbs, the 13th verse, say, he who covers his sins shall not prosper. You can't get the door, get in the door without repentance. You cannot see God clearly without a heart of repentance. And I'm going to get into the meaning of repentance and everything. But the first step into the kingdom is repentance. Is it surprising to you that John the Baptist, his first message in Matthew 3, 1 and 2. Somebody read that. I'm going to give you three of the most important people in the New Testament. Matthew 3, 1 and 2. In those days came John the Baptist. In those days come John the Baptist. Preaching in the wilderness of Judea, verse 2, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. His, his first message was about repentance. Does it surprise you that Jesus Christ, our Savior, his message to mankind, when he began Matthew 4 and 17, what did Jesus say in his first sermon? From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, repent. God is telling us about this is what you have to do first. Does it surprise you that the first apostolic preacher in Acts 2.38, what did he say in the first apostolic sermon? Repent. There's the key to getting what we want from God. Repentance. I think that we have kind of taken for granted or not so much as taken for granted but kind of added in our own emotional side to things knowing that if you don't repent you can deny yourself of grace you can deny yourself of blessings if you don't re have repentance in your heart you can deny yourself of the anointing see some people are not going to change they're not going to turn they're not going to uh, 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 accept a different view and even salvation. What do you know without repentance, you can't even have salvation. So many people, I, I've watched people come in and they get baptized or they come in and they say, Pastor, I want to be saved, but they're not ready to repent. They actually realize that the preacher's telling the truth. They actually realize that God is real, but I'm not ready to turn from what I like, and we, we've been touching on that. I'm not ready to, when we talked about even when Jesus told the rich man um, in the beginning of the sermon on Sunday that, um, and that unless you give up everything, give up all your stuff, unless you change the way you live, give, you were living a luxurious life, but 
turn. And sometimes repentance is not just turning from sin. It's turning from the way you think. And anytime you think against God, it turns into sin. But sometimes it's after you get saved, you got to keep on repenting. Because I used to think this way, but God is telling me to think that way. When you refuse to open up to God and say, whatever you want to do, I'll do it. The key to what God is getting ready to do in here, we're softening our hearts. We're actually saying, and I had to do that. We had to talk in the men's ministry. You know, maybe I thought this was the right way for years, but I'm open because I'm privileged to be in a place where God didn't have to let me be. I'm getting ready to see his hand. So maybe I thought I knew right. And so it took repentance from the pastor because um, uh, not meaning to, to share the testimony, any uh, given names and all that. But, but when, when I was told that, but what you said, well, maybe you could have said that different. Well, I, I said in the men's ministry, because you know me, I'm, I, I try to be macho. I was thinking, well, I'm the pastor, you know, and, and this and that. And then I thought, you got to be considerate with the congregation that you're pastoring. That was not right. And it, and it took something for me to actually repent and come back and say, I'm sorry. That's not the way God wanted. I thought that was right. Those of us that have stubborn hearts, we deny the, 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 the uh, power of God being worked in our life. Do you know what the, the word repentance mean? In the Greek, the word is metanoia in the Greek. Meta means mind and noel means turn around. In the Greek, repentance means change your mind. Let your mind turn around. In the Hebrew, repentance means give up and turn around. In the Greek, it means that you have to start with the mind change. Now, what is so interesting about that is people do not realize that it starts with the way you think. Because, as I said, I watch people come in and they don't want to give up what they're doing. They don't want to stop thinking the way that they're thinking, even though they know God is good. Let me ask you this. Is there anything in your life that you 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 I mean, uh, 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 can you say honestly, Lord, whatever you tell me to do, I'll do. Can you can you say that honestly? Lord, wherever you tell me to go, I'll go. Whatever you want me to think, even though I thought I knew how to cook chicken soup, but if you tell me to use something else, I have to use something else. You know, I, I use that analogy because we don't like nobody messing with mama's recipes. And she knew what she was doing. If it was good enough for mama, it should be good enough for you. You know, uh, <laughs> I tell the story that uh, Bishop Staten used to tell. He said that it was this couple that got married and, and, and the wife said, oh, I'm going to make ham and beans tonight. And so she got the ham and she cut the end of the ham off and cut into the bone and everything. And the husband says, I'm not used to that. Why did you cut that off and throw that away? She said, because that's what you're supposed to do. And, 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 and he said, why are you supposed to cut the end of the ham bone off? I heard people use the ham bone. Let's make a good soup. And she says, uh, well, that's what my mama used to do. So he went in the back room and called her mother and said, your daughter is cutting the ham bone and throwing it away. Jigsaw in the ham bone in half. And so the, he said, well, can you tell me why you told her to do it that way? She said, I don't know. I always did it that way myself. He said, why did you do it? She says, I don't know. My mama used to do that. So <laughs> the, thank God the grandma was still alive. They called the grandma. You know the story. The grandma said, I always did it because my mama did it. Some things, we're not trying to be evil. But if God's going to work with us, we have to have the mind of repentance. Some things I did down, and, that, and that's what happened to me when I got in trouble with God last week. When I say in trouble with God, I wasn't in sin or anything, but God just showed me that I want you to start doing things differently. So I get up and say one thing in the pulpit and somebody else bring it to my attention. I say, well, you know, I told the truth. God says, but that's not the way I want you to preach it. That's not the word I want you to say because I'm interested in drawing folks. It doesn't matter that you know what you're talking about. I'm interested in bringing folks into holiness. I'm interested in folks knowing me. And maybe in this generation, this dispensation, I, I'm saying it the way I need them to hear it. I'm not interested in your revelation, you see thing, and you, that, that's about you, that's not about me. When it comes to God, if we're going to actually see what God is getting ready to do in here, you have to have a heart of repentance. We have to be prepared. Like in the, in, in the Greek, uh, what we say it is, metanoia, 
Not only just turn from your ways, but your mind got to change. So people come up here and they get baptized and we tell them, okay, are you ready to stop lying? Are you ready to stop drinking? I, most of the people are going to say, yeah, because you're going to embarrass them. They know you can't drink anymore. <laughs> They'll be like, what did I get baptized for? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so so we, we try to cautiously. But as people come in the door, we have to teach repentance. You know, and, 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 and so... And, and then even as you go into the New Testament and as the Apostle Paul talked about repentance and as even the teaching, it, it gave the indication that you should find some sorrow there. And that's a challenging thing because a lot of people are not sorry. But when you lean to God, it becomes between you and God. So the sorrow comes where, Lord, maybe I don't feel that bad about that Budweiser I had last week. Or maybe I don't feel bad about going over Susie or Johnny's house but I feel bad that I wasn't pleasing you. That's where the sorrow begins. Remember what David said when David got caught doing what he did? Remember, David, he didn't say go tell the world. He said, it was you that I sinned against you and you only. So I'll take whatever punishment you have. David knew how to repent. It's between me and God. And so a lot of times I, I think that we're looking for people to actually start crying when they come out of the water and say, you know, I, I, I'm throwing this stuff away. And, and, and we, when we were at New Wineskin Central, or New Wineskin East, our church, we, you know, we had a lot of people get baptized. And so it, it, it was put up on my heart to just do something that they could understand. So we took a black, um, one of the praise team's black scarf, so it was maybe five by five, and we laid it in the middle up in the altar. We said, take everything out of your pocket that you want to repent from and bring it, throw it up on the altar. And uh, throw it on that black sheet, and that represents death. It's dying and you're walking away from it. And um, I, to my surprise, that thing got filled up with cocaine, cigarettes. I'm like, you folks ain't saved, are you? you know? I mean, drugs, cigarettes, marijuana, all came up on And, and this, we, it was a pretty large congregation. There was about three, three or 400 people there that day. So it wasn't that everybody in the church was in sin. It was just that when that came up there, there were some people that wanted to walk away. But then some of the people that had thrown stuff on there, they came back up and said, are y'all going to throw all that stuff away because I paid this and that for, I paid for that. So, so you know, it's, they, they weren't repenting. In the, in, in the Hebrew or in the Greek, you got to change your mind. I, I don't care. It's just that if God does not want me to have that, I will not have it. If God does not want me to keep that, I will not keep that. I, I, I was going to go over the lesson today. We're going to go to Jonah, the third chapter, but I'll say a couple of things. You can never see God in the manner in which he desires you to see him. Uh, I like that there too. That speaks of, who put the there? Oh, no. oh, we, we yeah. oh I, I said that. The reason I like that there because I'm ready for worship. I am ready for, I'm ready for us to sing the praises of God and, 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 and whatever. But, but we, we can never see God if God is out east and we're going west. That's what repentance is all about. You thought you knew. The Bible teaches us as Christians, as apostolics, that all have sinned and come short of the glory. All of us have come into a sinful nature and we're not where God wants us to be. With that being said, the only way you can get where God wants you to be is stop going where you're going. Because if you keep going where you're going, you're not going to see God. And people don't realize, well, you know, I'm not dying of cancer. I'm not dying of this, but God is trying to help you repent. Now, remember the country just last year. Uh, I, I was talking with Janet about this, the country two years ago here in the United States when COVID came. I actually believe that some people repented. Some people actually said, Lord, you know, um, uh, we need to do better. I actually believe that everything that happened, and I'll tell you what, what I said, I was talking to Janet, I know that somebody's going to probably contact me if they see this on Facebook, I was talking to Janet, I said, everything happened during that time was ordained of God. President Trump being in office, and I'm not getting in any politics, but I might as well just tell the truth because I'm a preacher. God knew how to ordain his will to make people pray. And so I didn't agree with the way he acted, the way he said, everything that happened was about trying to teach this country how to repent, to stop doing what we're doing, to stop going where we're going, stop thinking the way. And, and it wasn't that everybody was out robbing banks. It wasn't that everybody was out going to the drug house. 
Some of us that were saved weren't worshiping the way that we should worship. Some of us that are saved wasn't praying the way we should pray. God gives us a powerful tool to make things happen, the permission to talk to him, and we put it on the back burner. Did we need to repent from that? Or maybe you didn't, but I did. And I said that to say this, wasn't that kind of like Pharaoh? God says, Pharaoh, I want you to let my people go. And the spirit of Pharaoh comes over him. He, God sends the flies and the frogs, cause the land to get dark. And everything that God did, when the trouble come, what did he do? He repented. He called Moses. Hey, Moses, you were right. I'll turn around. And no sooner than things start getting better, what did he do? Went back to his own. Is that where, it's, it's interesting if what God is sending now because God is teaching us we need to promote this repentance to our neighborhood. Promote this unless we want to see what came on us in 2019. That was a sign. That didn't come by happenstance. And I, I was sitting there, we were discussing the Bible and discussing the class today, Jen and I, and, uh, and I said, you know, it just dawned on me. Everything that happened in that time was ordained by God. I said, we knew it, but I'm seeing it a little differently. Who was in the White House? God will not set up a situation to bring you close to him by chance or happenstance. That, was or that time was ordained by God. That was ordained for the church all around the world, the church here in this country, to get closer to him, to understand what he was doing. And, 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 what ha and, and, and if we know the story of Pharaoh, what happened when, when God sent nine plagues and he repented each time, but he kept backsliding? That's why I tell the saints, don't, don't get upset when we working with people and you don't see them today. The you know, devil trying to make them backslide. People get baptized and we, we, we need to stay on them, pray with them. That's what, the, that's what happened, that God allowed Pharaoh to have an evil heart. But, 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 but each time Pharaoh reverted back to his old way, he, God sent something else and he became a little more sorry. Now some of us repent because of what? Or we think we repent, but what, what is it? We're not really repenting, we're turning because we're sorry we got caught. Yes, yes. You, when, the, when those police lights are flashing outside, a lot, a lot of people, sir, I didn't do it. I, I'll never do this again. But when things get going good, they go back and do it again. The heart of man. And we need to understand that even in our church, when people come in and get baptized, it's not easy to repent. That's the, remember, that's the keys. Like, look at little Nathan, he like the keys. The keys to repentance, the keys to the salvation is repentance. If you throw away the keys, you can't be born of the water and of the spirit. You got to repent and be baptized, not be baptized. And we hope you repent because if you didn't repent, you're not going to get anything. You're not going to get the Holy Ghost. And a lot of times people are not bad people, but there's the subtraction of repentance in here. And we got to teach people how to repent, how to turn away and how to understand that God cares for you. So I don't bring it to you on the level in which you uh, uh, do, do. Do you like Cigarettes? No, no, I bring it on to the level that God is not pleased with that. Do you like God? Do you, you know, do, do you want God? Not do you want to give up, do you want to give up wine, beer? Do you want to give up cheating and doing it? Their nature? No, they don't want to give, give it up. In their nature? No, no. It takes the power of repentance, the power, power that draws people. And, and so now, before I go into the main thing, because we wanted to talk about Repentance is so powerful. Do you know it could cause God to repent? Uh oh, I better explain that one because I want nobody going out here saying I said the wrong thing. <laughs> I better explain that one. In Jonah 3, the Bible says that when Jonah repented and ran back over to Nineveh and then they repented, then God repented. He said, I was getting ready to kill him. They said that he repented. Your repentance can make God not so much as repent in the manner that you need to repent, but it could change God from discontinuing the things that you need and the blessings that he wants to give you. He wants to give them to you, but he won't as long as you won't repent. 
And, and, and so before we even go to Jonah to show the power of repentance, that if you would say, God, I'll just, if you just tell him, I'll just do whatever you want me to do. Watch things change in your life. You know, I'll go where you want me to go. Uh, 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 what happened on the 10th plague? Who can tell me that? Death. death. Death, that's right. When it gets to a place where there's no repentance, there's no life. When there's no repentance, there's no life. When it got to the place where God says, I sent all these signs to tell them, I want them to change, and they refuse to change, then he sent death. We don't want to ever get to that place. And I'm not, and, and, and let me clarify something. I'm not talking about physical death. It could be spiritual death. It, it could be death of your business, death of your profession, death of your dreams. When you refuse to let God in, you could cause death. Death of your vision. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to get up here and just preach the way that I want to. I, I'm, I'm going to, you could bring death to your ministry. And Jesus said, I come that you may have life. And so not listening to Jesus is not listening to your life. Well, let, let, let's real quickly, because, wow, it goes by so fast when we're having a good time. I'm having a good time. But let's go to Jonah 1 and um, just give an introduction of where I'm going. And then I'll probably have to preach on this Sunday. But Jonah, I'll start off by saying this to cut some of it. And you, uh, uh, we, we were going to read from Jonah, the first chapter, the second chapter, and the third chapter. The first chapter it tells how God called Jonah to go down to a people that were ungodly. What is so significant about this story is God called Jonah because Jonah knew how God was. Jonah knew that God was forgiving, a merciful God. And that's why God wants to use you because what you know about him. But the problem was the devil will have tools to try to circumvent your repentance. Uh, 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 in, in your way, in, in your thought. Jonah knew that, that if he did what God tells him to do um, and go preach to these people, that God may bless these people in a way that he really didn't want to see them blessed. Now, you, you do understand the story. Why, why didn't Jonah want them to be blessed? They were evil. And they, yeah, and, and they were enemies of Jonah's people. And so that's just like, the, you know, the people on the block that really treat you bad or the people in, in, on the job that really treat, you know, down deep. A lot of us really don't want to see them just get super blessed while I'm going through things. You know, you know, uh, the, per, the people that just always got to do you wrong. I know somebody had something like that in their life. And, 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 and um, so Jonah felt that these people hate our people. These people are our enemy and all that. And, and it would be just OK with me if God destroy them. You ever known anybody that you didn't, you wasn't asking God to kill them, but you didn't mind. Right. You wasn't asking God to, 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 to let their house go down the, with the flood when the, or, or, or let their gas get cut off, but you really didn't mind. It might teach them a lesson that, you know, don't, don't be so evil. You know, I had another preacher <laughs> call me and he was talking about somebody at his church that wouldn't listen to him. And um, he was trying to tell them how to do things and, and they wouldn't listen. They just did it their way. And he said, now you see what kind of trouble they're going on, going through. He said, he said, well, Pastor Mallet, I'm not saying I want them to have trouble, but I kind of feel good that God is showing them I was right. <laughs> and so sometimes, you know, we get like that. But but that's how Jonah was. Jonah wasn't so much as a murderer, but Jonah didn't mind if these people kind of get destroyed. You know, they, they weren't doing anything. But um, so God has spoke to Jonah and told him to do something. So you can be saved and get out of the will of God. You can be God's child and get out of the will of God. You can even be the pastor, the preacher, and somehow get out of the will of God. What do you do? We all need to repent. It doesn't matter if you're wearing the robe or the usher's badge back there, from the pulpit to the door. We need to open up to God. Well, you know, Lord, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. So Jonah gets to the place where God tells him to go down there and preach a revival down there. And, and, and the story goes on. Uh, uh, Maybe you can read a couple of scriptures and I'll fill in. Not the part I've told, just. Yeah, you could start with the, and then I'll explain that. It's faster if I do it this way, if I let her just read a couple of scriptures and I explain to you and uh, what is going on. Well, verse three, and Jonas, Jonah wrote his stuff to flee into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Jaffa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. 
So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Verse 5, Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the waves, the wares that were in the ship, into the sea. They start throwing their stuff away into the sea. Now let me say this. A lot of times in our churches, you're doing all you can, and, and um, you're st striving, and you wonder, what's going on with the church? I thought we should have more fire. You know, don't go blaming people. Blaming. It, it, it may sometimes be the, uh, uh, somebody aboard that just needs to repent. And, and, and God is merciful because when God sent the storm and everybody aboard started throwing their stuff over, I've told people this all the time. Watch who you make your best friend. You know, get away from these people that's always talking about the church, always talking about the pastor, always talking about the dick. I don't even need them around. Because what happened with Jonah, here's a disobedient, unrepentant person in these people's life on the boat with these people, and now they got to throw all their stuff away because he's disobedient, he didn't repent. They got to throw, throw their new leather coat overboard and, and their extra can of peaches and, I mean, the good things in life that they like. Because Jonah's disobedient. Watch who you're around. You know, get away from people that refuse to repent. Get away from people that refuse to listen. Now, now Jonah, uh, he was still God's man. He was still God's prophet. He was still God's speaker. And, 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 and while these other people were uh, uh, um, uh, nervous, what, it's just like what I like about the Bible. Remember, Genesis is the beginning of the Bible. And, and, and in Genesis, you see all kinds of things go on. Uh, brother kill a brother. Um, try rape uh, Jacob's daughter. Um, uh, different things that were just ridiculous went on in the book of Genesis. But then you have the book of Exodus. God always make a way of escape. That's what I like about the first two. There's a starting, and then if you make a mistake, God always have an exodus, a way for you to get back. The problem is we don't know how to repent. And, and go, go ahead. Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. People that don't repent, do you notice how things are going wrong with, in the environment? That they're causing a, a burden to be on the church, and they can sleep. You worried about, you know, I like some of you all's test. I was listening to some of the testimony Sunday, I was, and I come home, and I was talking to Janet about it was an individual that was saying that they just want to please God. They're just, you know, people that are saved, they have a desire. The people that... that Refuse to repent. They can actually go home and go to sleep like a criminal. Y'all ever watch Law and Order? Yes. You know, the, the ones that do it, they, they, they can sit up there and get questioned like, I didn't do it. And look at the detective like they got an attitude, just as guilty as sin. Yeah. The people that cause the problem with the church, you know how they can just sleep at night and you going home praying and fasting and you worried about uh, sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, but, 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 you know, the lack of repentance is dangerous. The spirit of no repentance is dangerous. It will hold a church down. And so they, they're on the ship and everything is going wrong, people. And, and they're throwing stuff overboard. And the captain, the captain went looking for Jonah. We're going to skip that. The captain went looking around. And Jonah's downstairs asleep. Captain knocks on the door and say, don't you know what's going on? How can you even sleep? They should have suspected him then. What is going on? How can you sleep? What is it that you... And, and, and Jonah wasn't worried. Because he knew how gracious God was, but he was taking a little for granted. But, but, and then what, what, what did they say after that? Verse 7, and they said everyone to his fellow, come and let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. <coughs> guilty, Jonah's guilty. Mm -hmm. Verse 8, then said they unto him, tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation, and whence comest thou? What is thy country, and of what people art thou? Nine, and he said unto them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. And, 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 and I'm going to hasten to my conclusion right about there, uh, because I, I think the Lord is satisfied that we pray for the sick. That was the focus of the night. I thought the class was going to be the focus of the night, but I realized that it was the anointing of God. God wants to assure you all that he's taking you to the next level. That is so special. If you, if you remember nothing else tonight, remember that you have been chosen individually as well as corporately. God has spoken to me and said that he 
has revival waiting at the door. Repentance is the key that will unlock the door. And I, you, you, if Jesus said, I would not have told you so if it wasn't because I got to be here with you next week. I got to be here with you next month. You can rest assured that I've told you the truth. We're going to be shouting together. We're going to be singing together. And so don't you worry about those that don't want to repent. You just, you just stay repentant in your heart. And so even in the story, when, 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 when God allowed Jonah to go through the test, the three days of, of, of when, when he jumped overboard, a, a sea monster or a whale or whatever they want to call it, something out of the sea swallowed him down, the, the whale, uh, which the Bible interprets. And he went into the belly of a whale for three days and, and three nights, and, and, and God kept him there. But sometimes God lets you go through some things so you can see what's going on. I think what happened with me the past four or five weeks is just a terrible sickness. I mean, I couldn't sleep at night. I, I mean, it was terrible. I thought maybe I had COVID. I took COVID tests and every, everything was coming back negative. I was coughing and then I, I, was, I thought I was well. I come to church and preach, get home. And, and that was just an attack of the enemy. You, 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 you in the wrong place. You, 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 you need to pack up. You in the wrong. That was just an attack of the enemy. Everything was going. I mean, till it started fighting my mind and, 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 and then other things started going wrong. And so, and, and I just had to take control. Sometimes God will let you go through things to show you how you can take control. You're living beneath your privilege. Sometimes, and, 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 and I guess I didn't have a lot of other things to worry about. So the, the devil knew what to attack to really worry my mind. And, uh, um, and a couple of things, you know, with the children back home and, and different things. But uh, when you go through these things and God show you, and now there's two sides to this story of repentance, as I conclude, that when Jonah went through these things, he repented. He realized that I need to do what God wants me to do. And so whatever it is, maybe God didn't tell you to go off to uh, Battle Creek and preach. Don't go to Nineveh. Maybe God just told you to be a great worshiper here. Maybe God just told you to be a great prayer warrior here. Maybe God, because I've always said when, when it comes to the church, there are three types of people. There are people out on the mission field. There are people that our home getting people ready to go to the mission field. So they call some to be pastors and teachers that stay home. But and, and, and like I was telling brother Kevin, our job is to bring them in, grow them up and send them out. Those of us that are called to stay here. We're not, we don't get so used to somebody that if God saved you, there's a job. If it's going downtown, telling it to the mission or going to Africa. But, 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 but uh, so many times, um, People get so stuck on themselves. And, 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 and when we read this story, we look at, well, I'm not Jonah. This story is to everybody. Maybe, you know, how many of us are you sitting in here on Sunday and, and something tells you get up and give that testimony? You just sit there. Have that ever happened? Something tells you to get up and say it because somebody's sitting in there that need to hear what you have to say. You say, well, it's not that much. God says, well, how do you know it's not that much? How do you know that person is not going to commit suicide if you don't answer a question in their mind today? How do you know that person is never going to come back to church if they don't feel secure about God today? How many times have God asked you to do something that you didn't do? So while we're judging Jonah, what about the little things that, you know, I would, in the grocery store when, uh, or uh, the, the testimony I give you about the doctor's office when God says pray for the doctor? I thought of a thousand reasons why I shouldn't pray for that doctor. I never listen to him. I don't take the medicine. That, I went years without even taking the medicine, just taking the prescription and going, God was good to me. I just take the prescription, just throw it away out of the window. I ain't taking all that medicine. It was when I got, you know, over 55 that I said, wait a minute, I need that blood pressure stuff, you know. <laughs> but for many years, I just threw the stuff out of the window and the doctor knew it. He's like, um, I didn't even give you enough pills the, the last to the next appointment. How'd you stay away for 60 days and only gave you 30 days worth of pills? And I'll be trying to answer without lying. Yeah, 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 I guess, guess you're right. I should have noticed that doc. And so, but then God tells me to pray for him. It's not because I was the best patient, but because I was God's child in that place. I was Jonah in that place at, at that time. God says, I use you to preach my word. Pray for him and tell him that the fervent effectual prayers of the righteous avail of much. It got nothing to do with whether you well. It got something to do that God is always well. And guess what? And, and, and God is not a practicing physician. He's a healer. 
He's not practicing medicine. He heals. And so to get that point across, but how many times have God asked you to do something that you don't do? Now, let me, I know I need to let you all go, but I got to ask you this question. If somebody come in the door Sunday and they're not to your accepting, they're not wearing what you want to wear, but the Holy Spirit tell you to go sit next to them. Look like they may have lice. That would be hard. I don't know if I want to sit, but, but, I mean, but th this happened. I mean, we've done that. We, we, people, we brought people in our house and God told us to wash the lice out of the air and all that. But, I mean, and, 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 or, or somebody smell like they've been drinking alcohol. And God tells you to go, they have a question in their mind, go answer the question now. Do you have the right to start questioning God? Well, why, who, what? When God knows that that person needs to have a question answered, isn't that what Jonah did? And so, but Jonah repented. So I'm telling the church, let's get to the place where we tell God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And if I gave you the impression before that I was a little slow at something, I repent. I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll say whatever you want me to say. I'll be whatever you want me to be. And in the last but not least, when Jonah repented, and, 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 and please read this story. Read down to the third chapter. What's the last verse? The third, three, 23 or something. When Jonah repented, the Bible says that he actually went down there and preached and they had revival. And the king and everybody said, go on a fast because Jonah told us the truth. Do you know the, the wickedest people might take what you, 310? Okay, yeah. And the wickedest people may listen to what you say and get saved. Those people listen to what Jonah said because he told them the truth. But now, when, when, when they listened, Jonah got mad. Jonah got mad because guess what? He saw the power of repentance. He saw that when they repented, they got saved. When they repented, God opened the windows of heaven and poured it out on their little city. Now, when that city repented, it caused God to repent. And God says, I had, can you read the scripture? They won't just think I'm, I don't want nobody leaving this and I just put it in my word. Tell, let's go with the word says. I'm, I'm about finished. Go, go ahead and read that. Chapter three, verse 10. Uh -huh. And God saw their works, none of his works, that they turned from their evil way and God repented of the evil. Say that again. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them and he did it not. So, so it wasn't that God was in sin. God just had planned to do some things that wasn't going to be positive for them. And God repented. God changed his mind. And so your, the power of repentance that's in you, you can actually cause God to repent in some situations to the point where he will bless a place that he wasn't blessing. He'll start blessing because of your repentance. And so because of your opening. And we, we're going to see some things that we may not have seen, and uh, we're going to hear some things that we may not hear, have heard, if we are open to repentance. Repentance and being able to say, God, I'll turn around from whatever direction I'm going and go the right way is powerful. I said this all the time, and I got about 60 seconds. Can I have 60 more seconds? When we were on, when we were on our way to Chicago, on our way to, we were on our way to Indianapolis, and I, I was tired, and Janice said, let me drive. And so Janice started driving on 94. And uh, I woke up, and I think we were right outside of Chicago. And she was, I was like, Janet, what did you do? And, but the, the point is this, and bless her heart, she was trying to uh, look out for old Reggie there. And I love my Janet. She uh, making sure that I got some rest. I made sure I threw that in there, because, you know, I haven't had my meal yet today. So I made sure, oh, I love my baby, yeah. <laughs> Oh, but, but <laughs> okay. But 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 my point is this: the only way we got to Indianapolis wasn't one of us being stubborn and say, you know, I did this, so I know what I'm doing. I had my license thirty years. I know what I'm doing. But when you find out that I didn't intend on doing or saying something that would not get me where I am supposed to be then I have to stop and turn around. That's repentance. And it starts in the mind. You got to accept. You're not making me do this. I'm doing this because I want to get home. You're not making me because there's a place. There is a place that God has set in his will for you. You will never get there if you're going your way. You got to, Lord, ask God every day. Guide me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. You got to ask the Lord, you know, and, and, and even now, 
as a pastor, I have to ask the Lord every single day. I must have spent hours a day just for this few minutes that I just talk with you because I cannot afford to give you the wrong way on the map. I cannot afford to have you turn right when you were supposed to turn left. You know, and, 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 and as I said, you know, uh, Fast and, 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 and y'all pray for me. I, I got to let you go, but as you can see, I feel good. I am diabetic and I've been on a three day fast and I feel better than I felt last week eating every day. God is doing something. And, and, and if we had time, I know y'all got to get home if people got things to do. But if we had time, I go into worship all over again. But, but I know we don't have time. Amen. Good to see everyone tonight. Amen. Repentance. Got us into the church. Yes, yes. And repentance is going to keep us there. Amen. I've always taught that. When you get saved, that didn't end repentance. That just got you started, didn't it? And so you, repentance, you're in, a, you're in a repentant mode for the rest of your life. Till you die or till Jesus comes. If you can't be in a mode of repentance, uh, Pastor Mallet brought it out. Uh, that's the key, or one of the keys, but uh, Peter had the keys of the kingdom, and when he opened up his mouth there on the day of Pentecost, yes. what must I do to be saved? He says, repent. <laughs> Amen. Let us stand. Get me going here in a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we give him thanks indeed uh, for this day. For your many blessings you have poured out upon us, for your grace and mercy, Lord, we're thankful to be here tonight, thankful for this word. Lord Jesus, we know it is food for our soul. Oh, Lord, it will save us and keep us saved. Bless us, oh God, indeed, as we depart here tonight with the hand of safety until we're able to meet again in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.